What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you some news about Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, which was just recently announced, officially that is, because following the release of Kingdom Come Deliverance in 2018, and its very positive reception, it's been a pretty, I would say, open secret that the developer Warhorse Studios was working on a game that was all but guaranteed to be the second one. And now we have official confirmation of that. And given that I enjoyed the first one quite a bit, janky systems and all, naturally I've been a little curious about what the sequel had in store, so I've gone over the announcement and a couple interviews after the fact to kind of wrap my head around what they've shown, what they have planned, and simply getting an idea of what to expect. And on that front, we realistically don't have that long to wait for this particular title because it is set to release in 2024, so likely I would say around holiday season later in the year if I had to guess. And the developers have largely stated that this game is a lot of what they wanted to do with the original, but being that it was their first release as a studio, they simply weren't able to pull it off. Now, in spite of that, if you haven't played the original game, it is quite good. It's incredibly immersive, to be specific, but it's no secret that that game had a lot of very janky systems. And yet, in spite of that, the original title did quite well. In fact, I didn't get around to playing it until I believe it was 2022, and even then, my review for that game actually got like over half a million views, and is my fifth most watched video on the channel. Basically, there's a huge audience for it. An audience that will likely finally get some closure to at least a part of Henry's story, the protagonist, because the story of the second, at least in broad strokes, really won't be much of a secret, and this is largely due to the way the original title ended, as it was, I wouldn't say a cliffhanger exactly, but not exactly a hugely satisfying ending, because they were clearly setting something up for the next game, which is to say our character, Henry, sets off with his, I would say, friend, Hans, though you do also kind of work for the guy, in search of revenge on the person who killed Henry's parents. And it looks like that's going to form the crux of the story for two. And in particular, it's going to take us to the city of Kutenberg. And while we are going to be able to explore that city, it does look like the map is going to be divided up into two large explorable areas that will ultimately be about twice the size of the map of the original game. But they wanted to point out that one area is going to basically be the big city area, which they described as being very large, so it looks like they're aiming to recreate what that city, at least in spirit, felt like, especially since it's my understanding that it was the second largest city in the area at the time, and it looks like that's going to be separate from the more undeveloped side of the map, which is called the Bohemian Paradise, which is essentially sort of untamed wilds that you can run around, and some of the early shots they've shown of this do look pretty incredible, and that's actually really great, because the forest especially in the original game was very true to what you might expect from an actual forest. So it's cool to see them carrying that forward, albeit with, I would say, a bit more color, but nothing that looked out of place. And while we're exploring both the city and the wild areas, there's a few other systems we can get to grips with. For starters, they're adding early firearms, nothing crazy or over the top. It looks like mostly early hand cannon type stuff. I'm curious if they'll include anything with a paper cartridge, though I doubt it because those didn't come around until a little bit later. But my point being is that there's a bit of historical wiggle room there in terms of firearms, and I'm just curious how much creative liberty they'll take with that, basically. But in addition to firearms, they're also bringing us crossbows and an evolution of their crime system. If you've played the first game at all, while Henry is, I would say, by default, a sort of noble knight stereotype, you don't have to play the game that way. You could actually be a pretty bad person. And this game is going to be no exception. Essentially, your quest for vengeance can either be a righteous crusade if you prefer, or it can be more about throwing yourself into the depths of depravity yourself. So just like the original, you can get up to all sorts of no good activities, and they described the world as very reactive to this, beyond just the initial consequences. Like obviously you do something, somebody catches you. But apparently, if you do this kind of thing enough, people will start to be suspicious of you and you'll sort of garner a reputation for it. And I'm curious if that's just like a basic reputation system or if it's something more ingrained into the overall status of the world and basically how malleable that is and how much of a video game it winds up feeling. 
Speaking of it feeling like a video game, though, they did want to emphasize that while this certainly is a sequel, it will be friendly to newcomers as well, and that you're still going to be able to pick what direction Henry goes in. Now, I'm curious what that means for the game, mechanically speaking, as we took Henry from a simple peasant to essentially a full-blown knight in the first title, so theoretically he should know how to do a fair bit before we kick off the second game, and I'm curious how they're going to gamify that, basically. And the developers, at least in this reveal, talked about how essentially Henry was still a young man and there were opportunities to still shape who he was going to become, and obviously that's got to work out somehow for the sake of this being an RPG, so I'm just kind of curious how they managed to attempt to thread those needles. And as of right now, that's pretty much all we've got in terms of information on Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 following its big reveal. And while we are certainly still a little bit light on details, we certainly won't have to wait too much longer for more as, again, it's releasing this year. And I, for one, am quite excited about it, as the first game was something truly special underneath all its jank, and I think in the case of Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, if they can pull all of this together in a way that feels a bit better to play while maintaining the core of what the first game was, then this has the potential to be a really big hit. But ultimately, time will tell. And in the meantime, that's going to do it for this particular video, though do stick around if you want to hear more about this game in the future, as I will definitely be covering any updates for it. Though for now, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, let me know all about how you feel about this title down in the comment section below. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day. Yeah.